The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 20th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial it in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, well, actually, you can't call in. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a sea of red, at least with regard to all the U.S. indices that you and I track. Dow is down 84 points. S&P down 37. Nasdaq's down 160. Russell's down 7. Trendy's down 93. Semi's off 63. Gold's up 21 bucks. Silver's off 7 cents. Lights recruit up 19 pennies. Trade at 69.42. Got natural gas up 11 cents. Trade down to 334. It's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. You've got the 30-year Treasury off 11 ticks. A 10-year note is down 6 as well. Now, leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, we're being led by Marco Strategy, a $52 move out there. The uh, Williams-Sonoma up 37 bucks. Mercado Rebay, 23. Wix.com, 21. And Restoration Hardware up 19. Shakers to the downside left by Powell Industries. About a 14% move or 45 buckaroonies. Target down 33. 21% there. Monolithic Power Systems. 26 bucks, nearly 5%. Fabrinet down 25 bucks, nearly 10% there. And Dicom Industries, an 11% move, 22 bucks. We got some shakers out there, but we got a few movers as well. Let's begin our day taking a look at that New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced decline oscillator. Still below the zero threshold level. When it's below the zero threshold level, that's that red line on the panel. Uh, second from the uh, bottom out there, that tells us that the sellers are the ones with an edge. However, it's being offset right now by the spot fix, which is trading just below the oh it's trading just above the 50-day exponential moving average 50 days at uh, 1784 we're trading right now at 1802 that's really the line of demarcation you want to be paying attention to out there is that spot VIX and that 1784 level um, right now the spot VIX has a, a one-day rate of change about 10 percent so if we do close above the 50-day much like yesterday we're going to get that one-day rate of change about plus 10 percent that says that overnight you would expect or anticipate some type of bounce or bottom we've covered that before maybe we'll get a chance to review that uh, again uh, later in the show and take a look at the patterns that you would be looking for out there what else do we want to take a look at while we are here i would say just as a refresher i think we talked about this yesterday morning uh if we take a look at the daily equity future contract so the ES Mini and the NQ both have bullish structured daily profiles. And those are the ones to really be paying attention to on any rally. And why is that? Because when you trade below a bullish structured profile for two consecutive sessions, in this case here, we've done that. Um, a counter trend move will find resistance in that what used to be the buy zone. Now I'd refer to it really as the sell zone. So the sell zone for the ES Mini, which it already hit the bottom of, 
uh, earlier in the trading uh, day, uh, I, I'm sorry, earlier this morning on a rally out there is up at the bottom of its profile. That's at 59.54. So that begins the sell zone, so to speak. That's between 59.54 and 59.87. That's under the assumption that you believe that the ES mini has topped and we're in a downtrend. So you'd be looking to sell in that zone. In the case of the NQ, the sell zone would be between 29.40. Two and 21075 out there. The Dow does not have a bullish structured profile, nor does the Russell 2000. In the case of the Dow, it closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday. That's at 43,491. A second consecutive close below that would suggest that we have a profile change in trend. Now, downside price objectives for these three instruments, and really the fourth one being the Russell 2000, being below profile support, would be those rising uh, trend lines out there. You can draw those in on your screens. You can see them on my screens out there, and that would be an area to watch to the downside out there. So that's the daily time frame for what's going on inside the equity future contracts. But we've got more. What do you mean we've got more, Stevie? We're going to go take a look at those intraday charts out here. So for that, we're going to begin by taking a look at what's going on on Stevie's white background charts. We've got daily as the largest time frame. We go all the way down to a 10-minute chart. Now, if you take a look at the 15-minute chart out here, you had a nice TD9 count bottom. That formed uh, really at 11, uh, 1045, and price rallied right up into that oscillator and change line. So that's a key level of resistance. We've turned down from it. That's at 2641. That's red out there. When you trade below red oscillator and change line, it uh, typically tends to suggest that we go back to test support. On a 15-minute basis, support out here is it's a, it's a bullish structured profile. Its buy zone is between 2509, 2542. I'd pay attention to that. If we take a look at the 30-minute NQ chart, uh, price pulls all the way back to its breakout level, 25.24. It was 24.76 for the 60-minute time frame chart. And look at that big old bullish hammer candle that it formed out there, it being the 60-minute time frame. So if we do close below that hammer candle, by the way, that hammer candle low out here is at the uh, 2477 level, then that would just simply tell us, well, it does say if you're long, you're wrong, but this would just suggest that we head back to test that nice roads momentum indicator bottom pattern that formed at 10 o'clock in the morning, and that was yesterday out here. If we take a look at the four hour time frame chart, price getting back and testing, rejecting profile support. The same for the five hour chart out there. And all of these are the reasons why I suggest that, well, we've made a bottom inside of the NQ out here. At least those are the signals at the moment. Doesn't mean that we don't get that pullback. A 15 minute chart is one really to keep your eye on out here. But it does look to Stevie like we have made at least an intraday bottom out there. Now let's go take a look. Let's not stop with the uh, NQ. Let's go take a look at the ES mini out here. Let's go see what its chart signals are providing to you and I. This is going to take just a, a moment to uh, populate out there. Um, but once it does, then we'll have our info. And, uh, and again, in the case of the ES Mini, the key here is really going to be that sell zone. Now, I can see on the daily time frame, the oscillator and change line is in between that uh, so-called sell zone. Used to be the buy zone, you know, 59.54 to 59.87 out there. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, you'll see the roads meant to indicator bottom pattern that formed out here. This was yesterday. This was at the... Uh at the 2 o'clock time frame, price right now is pulled back and is testing profile support. In the case of the 4-hour time frame chart, price is testing its buy zone out there. The buy zone is between 58.89 and 59.01. 2-hour time frame chart, TD9 count top, price pulls back to its breakout level, 58.82. Going back to a breakout level can be a bottom signal. So we're getting signals here from the ES Mini as well that its intentions are to form an intraday bottom, you know, really as we speak. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. Well, we've got a few things to look at. HYLN for Brent, BGS as well, XBEV and NVIDIA. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, before we get into uh, ticker symbol HYLN for Brent out there, let's look at the seasonal pattern out here. This is the S&P 500. It's its 96-year seasonal pattern during election years. And you can see that uh, post-election, we basically end in a kind of a choppy market to higher out here. This is suggesting that we should have seen a bottom uh, right around now, yesterday, today, maybe the next day out there. Suggesting that this one, the Santa Claus rally would begin. If we take a look at if I get rid of the presidential cycle, just simply go back 96 years, you'll see really the same type of signal out here, only from this point forward, not as choppy as we took a look at during the presidential cycle. So I just simply offer that uh, to you, and that's going to really be a lead to a follow-up in another discussion that we'll have, uh, whether it's during this break, uh, during this session or not, it might be the next one. And you'll definitely want to pay attention to this. Uh, not what I'm going to say right now, although I, I'd suggest it, but, but when I go do through that next segment out there, because there's a lot of people that believe the market is just simply going to crash and move lower because of the war or potential war. Is that what you think? Well, we'll come back to that right now. Let's go take a look at HYLN. This is for Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks so much for writing in. Nice to uh, hear from you. Uh, Brent is long this position. So, First, let's start with a monthly time frame. Monthly time frame has a TD9 count bottom, Brent, and suggests that price is going to move up towards its TD9 count breakdown level. That is priced at $3.88. So longer term, monthly chart suggests that we head there. How about the weekly time frame chart? Well, the weekly time frame chart last week confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Also, I believe it was a sell the D point. You had identified an A to B equals CD pattern. But if price closes above last week's high, last week's high is at $2.91 that pattern would get negated. Now, you form that Rhodes Mintum indicator top at the same time testing that green oscillator and change line. And you can see we're still well above that on the weekly time frame. So this is not so much a short signal as it is a neutral signal. But if on Friday we close above that high that I gave to you, the weekly chart has said we are also headed higher. On the daily time frame, the daily time frame would need a bearish reversal candle, Brent, to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price yesterday closed above the top of its daily profile. That's at 291. We pulled back and tested so far. 
That level again today, the low so far, it looks like it's 291. It is 291. Now, if we close below 291 today, your next level of support to the downside would be about 282, daily oscillator and change line. And if you close below that, it's either 269 or 248. That could be your support levels out there. But if you do hold and close above 291 today, well, then you've got another profile change in trend, and that suggests that we continue to move higher. Yesterday, what price did, Brent, was it negated erosion to indicator top that it formed on the trading day of November 13th. So I would say everything here looks mighty good. If we take a look at a uh, intraday chart to see what's going on for blanks and giggles, um, I don't have much. I don't have a topping pattern that I see on the 30-minute time frame. But price is pulling back. The level of support here on a 30-minute time frame would be the center of that uh, bearish structured profile that price was above for more than two consecutive sessions. So the buy zone, if you will, out here on HYLN is between 289 and 293, where we're trading right now. So Brent, I hope that provided you with the info that you were looking for. If not, please write back, let me know, and we'll get that off to you. His uh, next request was to take a look at ticker symbol BGS. He entered BGS yesterday out there. Uh, BGS, as we can see, Brent was trading the TD9 counts out there. Now what we have today, Brent, is a nice new bullish structure profile in the daily time frame. Your next level, so the buy zone on that was between 623 and 631. We're at 637 right now. You do have a battle at the oscillator and change line, currently printed at 653. So within a penny or two of that level is where that battle would be. If price can get above that, then the next battle is the top of that new profile that formed today. You formed yesterday, my apology. 666, that sounds like a devilish number. Hopefully, price would take uh, would close above that level, and then you'd be off to the races. Now, those races would take it to 731 or thereabouts. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. We do not have a weekly bottom pattern out there, so you're really going to want that uh, daily to uh, take out that profile resistance at 666. We also do not have a monthly uh, bottom pattern out here. Now, you've got a signal, just like you do on the weekly, roads meant to indicator signal, it means the market is stretched, but you need a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. So uh, watch, uh, yeah, look, I, I know your, your stop would be below yesterday's low because of the TD, I closed below yesterday's low because of that pattern that would be out there, but it looks like a good trade here at the moment. Watch 653, watch 666, and you really want to see it close above that level out there. So Brent, thanks for those two requests. And uh, have a, a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, GTE writes in, obviously, his favorite stock or her favorite stock, XPEV, out there. So if you look at the XPEV on a monthly time frame, XPEV, although it has closed above closed above the top of its monthly profile one month, then last month back below it, this month we're back above it, all that we've done since the recent high out here, and on a monthly basis that recent high would be July of 2023, is only a 0.382 retracement out there. And that's up at the 1294-ish uh, area. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, although I have an A to B equals CD pattern that is drawn in here, it has not been confirmed with volume. What I mean by that is the swing point on a weekly basis that formed here the week of uh, October 4th. 122 million shares was passed with only 93 million shares. Doesn't mean the A to B equals CD pattern won't come to fruition, but it hasn't been confirmed. So it's a little uncertainty there. In the case of the daily time frame, we got a nice island top reversal that confirms a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. About the bearish, about the most bearish candlestick pattern that you can get out there. So that says be careful. Price is trading below profile support. This will be day number, at least day number two below that. Uh, that's at 12.99. What this is suggesting is that we could actually see an A to B equals CD pattern form out here. In order for that to occur, you'd really want to see a close below the low of November 15th. Volume there, 12 million shares. The low is at 1234. You close below that, you get an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. I know you're thinking that this is bottom, and I think you were referring to more on a daily time frame, and that is not what Stevie sees out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to XPEV. John wrote in. On behalf of probably the majority of the public out here that is holding NVIDIA. Because everybody wants to know what's NVIDIA going to do tonight uh, after earnings out here. Well, so we took a look at NVIDIA yesterday. We recorded that show between 8 and 9. And what we were able to share with you was that price has a roadsman to indicator top that went ahead and confirmed with the bearish engulfing candle on November 13th. Price then pulled back. And what it did was it found support at where a counter trend move to the downside would find support out there. Again, the, these profiles are extraordinary. You really should want to use them. Uh, they provide you with such great information out there. I remember the day, it was last week, I think, I was having this 
uh, I might have been doing an early show. In fact, I think I was doing an early show, and the profile system was shut down. And, man, I really felt blind out there. And at least to be able to provide each of you with what the markets were communicating to us, support resistance, which is, you know, one of the most important elements of trading out there. So here, price pulls back, it tests and rejects that area, then yesterday it moves higher. Now, this is rallied in that green oscillator and change line. The preference would be, and here's what I would say, John, is that at day's end, price closes above 147.46. That's that green oscillator and change line. Even though we would still have a roadsman indicator top out there, it would be neutralized. So right now, that top is still in place. We've had a rally. Maybe it was just a counter trend move to the downside. Also, maybe a counter trend move to the upside. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 counter. No, I take that back. It has a Roachman Dim indicator top. But here, prices trade above that green oscillator change line. It doesn't matter where it is on Wednesday. It matters where it is on Friday. Is this giving us a signal? When we come back from this break, we'll finish talking about NVIDIA with John. Then we're going to look at PRQR for Dan, uh, at KZIA for Dan, and the Euro for Ron R. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the charts here for NVIDIA. We've taken a look at the daily time frame, the weekly as well. Now, the weekly is traded above that green asset and change line. So I would say right now, the signal at 1130 in the morning on Wednesday is more neutral, even though it's got that top out there. It's um, it's somewhat neutral as well in the daily time frame and the monthly time frame. If next Friday we see a close above its TD9 count high, we're trading above it right now. And that's at the uh, 140.76 level. It negates that signal and says we continue to move higher. So each of these time frames, daily, weekly, and monthly, do have topping signals. Prices pulled back, tested support on the daily time frame, really done the same thing on the weekly time frame. Um, it's really not clear to me, John. What I would say this is leaning more towards trading higher than it is trading lower out there. But you do have those tops in place out here, and you close above those levels out there, and it's off to the races to the upside. So that's about the best that I can provide to you. I'd like to provide more, but that's what I'm going to give to you. Tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to change. We've got a number of requests that have come in, but I do want to get to uh, this number of emails that come in kind of asking different questions. And so I've kind of surmised what people we're really looking for and the thought process the general consensus out there is that uh looks like we're entering potentially world war three out here uh, much to stevie's chagrin i am about peace not war uh, but uh you know maybe i'm just on the uh, small side of that i don't know in any event uh, the question would be how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've come from. Now, thankfully, we've only had uh, two world wars. I'm hoping that we can keep it that way, but it just seems like the uh, batch of uh, politicians that we have across the globe just don't see it the way Stevie sees it. But what I want to share with you is how does the market react? How do you, you know, we've only had two, so two is not really the greatest of sample sizes out here, but here is an example, just go back to World War One, And World War One. I started really back on uh, July 28, 2014, Austria and Hungary, they declared war on Serbia. So we take a look at what the market did. The market moves lower. This is the uh, Dow that we're taking a look at, by the way. Um, make sure I'm on the right chart here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we get that uh, gap, that, that knee-jerk reaction to the downside. Uh, the market doesn't open, though, in the U.S. back until December 12th out there. So during war, you know, there's a question. I saw some questions in the den. Is it possible that the market could close? Well, if you take a look at World War I, the answer to that question would be yes, of course. But when it does open back up on December 12th, 2014, that was a bottom. That was a bottom inside the U.S. Now I'm saying that was the. I'm not saying that was the bottom, but that most certainly was a bottom out there. What happened? What what transpired here across the globe that made that when the U.S. market opened back up? Well, Stevie would say that the reason was is because capital was flowing out of war torn areas out there, and it had to fly somewhere, and that uh, where it flew to was the U.S. So just the opposite. Remember, when there's wars that are going on, capital still has to go somewhere out there. So that was World War I. Let's go take a look at Let me get past the World War I stuff out here. You know, we could spend a lot of time on this. Let's take a look at World War II. World War II begins on Friday, September 1st, 1939. That's when Germany invaded Poland. Obviously, we weren't into uh, the war until 1941 out there, so a few years later. Um, and what happens? That was a bottom in the uh, Dow. That was a bottom in the Dow. In fact, we move higher until we form a TD9 count up. Now, that TD9 count up, a TD9 count top, I should say, that was a significant one. That was a very significant one. But what had took place in World War II? What took place in World War II is capital flew right into the U.S. It's got likely going to happen again. In fact, I can say with certainty that it will happen again if World War III, in fact, breaks out. Uh, that is, unless we somehow have boots on the ground here, which I don't think that is the likely outcome. Go back to World War II. You had Friday, September 1st. Germany invades Poland. Sunday, September 3rd. You had France and the British Commonwealth declare war on Germany. Again, so what was smart capital thinking? Smart capital was thinking back then, I want the hell out of Dodge. I want to go to some place where there is no war on the uh, ground, so to speak, out there. So that's it. How do you know where you're going unless you know where you've come from? Again, this is only two sample sizes, but this this outcome is not going to be any different out there. And with things heating up each and every day out here, um, it's just I, I know it goes beyond maybe the way one might normally think. And I can't guarantee you what's going to happen out there. But I can share with you what has happened. And we can take a look at look, we can take a look at what global capital does. You and I have spoken about this a number of times. Just take a look at gold in the major currencies. What's gold doing today? Gold is rallying in every currency. So those people, if there's anybody out there that's trying to short gold right now, well, I can tell you, oh, this is just simply in the Middle East. Forget about the Middle East. Let's go find those gold charts in the major currencies out here. Give me a moment. We'll pull that screen back up for you. 
gold. Here's the gold in our major currencies. What are we doing today? We're trading higher in all of these current, every single currency. In fact, we're getting pretty close to the all-time high in uh, uh, Coronas out there. Um, I'm not talking about the kind of Corona that you put a lime in, you know, and sip down with some uh, with some nice food out there. Um, in any event, if we take a look at the same thing with regard to, uh, let's take a look at the S&P 500. This is priced in major currencies out here. Uh, so, um, you know, sorry, I got a, this. I don't know why this chart looks like this, but. Um, and I have I don't have the new all-time highs, but right now we are trading. I'm just looking at the day. How are we trading today? We're trading a bit lower in terms of Swiss franc, a bit lower in Canadian loonie, a bit lower. But we haven't taken out the lows out here in in those currency patterns. We've not taken out those lows. We haven't even taken out the lows from yesterday inside of uh, U.S. dollars. So the it, important thing to understand is global capital is going likely going to flow. So, you know, where it's going to break out, who's, you know, we may be in it right now um, out there, but we're certainly inching closer to it every day. So do not think. Well, think whatever you want. I would say the charts say do not think that the U.S. markets, maybe they crash for a day or two, but global capital is going to flow here to the U.S. We've seen it. We've seen it. We're seeing it right now with the U.S. dollar index. That's the flight to safety is the U.S. dollar index out there and it'll be U.S. Uh, based assets and so forth. OK, so enough of Stevie's stuff out there. But I really think that's about as most the most important thing I could have shared with you today was just that out there. So hopefully you took some snapshots of those screens out there. Now let's go back to normal programming out here and let's go take a prqr for dan so let's take a look at prqr what do we have here we've got prqr that is um and looking for some type of signal out here dan uh why don't I have profiles give me a second here i think i think this chart somehow got deleted and i had to so let me see if we got some there we go so here we take a look at the PRQR, Dan. You're trading inside a bearish structured profile on the daily time frame, and uh, price is likely to go down and test that support level at 354. You close below 354, then I don't know where you're going to go. I'd have to say it's probably 343, below 343, 315. Those two last figures coming from the weekly time frame charts out here. Monthly chart looks muy bueno. Weekly chart looks really good. Uh, daily chart looks uh, pretty good as well out here. So 354. Now, I know you're kind of comparing PRQR you are against KZIA. So let's go take a look at that chart, see what kind of information we can glean from it. In the case of KZIA, what you like about this is right now you're trading above the top of its daily profile. This would be day number two above that level. Profile change in trend, but damn what you want. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's inside a bullish structured profile. Steve sees the top right now. We come back from this break, we're gonna finish taking a look at KZIA for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's re-begin our uh, analysis of KZIA for Dana the Tiger's Den. So the first thing that we should know on the daily time frame is there was an A to B equals CD pattern. We're just simply drawing in the A to B line. I'm just simply going to move this to the C point. We can see it was more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, about 1 to 1.272. It was a confirmed Gartley buy pattern that formed out here with that bullish piercing candle on November the um, 18th out here. Now what price is just simply dealing with is uh, resistance battles, but uh, two consecutive close about 563 dan even though you got that oscillator and change line currently acting as resistance it's a bullish outcome and so if price does close above the oscillator and change line that is currently printing at word 589 just a couple pennies higher. It is up at the 593 level. Close above that, Dan, you're going to head to 719, the top of that daily profile. On a weekly time frame, you're dealing with uh, resistance as well. And that's at the, it looks like 589. It's at 593. So you got 593 here as well. So 593 seems to be the magic number that sets this thing continuing to move higher out there. Monthly time frame chart is just waiting for the daily and the weekly to do their job. So if you're asking Stevie, which of those two charts look better at the moment? PQ, PRQR or KZIA? It's clearly KZIA. So hope that that helped you out. And as always, thanks for your request. We had a request to take a look at wheat. This is from, oh no, it's to take a look at the euro. We'll come back and take a look at wheat in a moment. I don't like to get uh, too far off, uh, you know, first come, first serve in Stevie's restaurant out here. So let's uh, keep that uh, pattern going. Let's take a look at the euro. We covered the euro in detail yesterday, uh, Ron, but uh, we'll give you that same uh, really uh, overview. If you take a look at the monthly time frame chart. Now, this is really important. Well, I pointed this out yesterday. I didn't even realize I had it on my charts until I pulled them open. Had what on your chart, Stevie? Now, it's a monthly time frame. You can see you got the black line that shows when Russia, Russia invaded Crimea. What are these, what's the euro done since then? Got crushed. Then we've got out here the uh, moment in time when um, Russia invaded Ukraine. In fact, that is act as a key resistance level. So, um, and what I probably should note there is yesterday, and I will do that. You got yesterday using uh, U.S. missiles fired into uh, Russia. Today you've got uh, from where? I don't know if they're from Britain or from, uh, but there's some, somewhere in uh, Europe uh, provided some additional missiles out there. So we should put those days in there. But based on this here, I'd say the high for the euro is probably in, at least based on, on the monthly time frame chart for these patterns out here. Now, you do have the monthly chart trading below its red oscillator and change line. If it closes there on Friday, it being 1.0735 three 
1.07356. That's going to suggest we get back to those lows in the $94 area. Now, that's the monthly time frame chart. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, we are uh, trading below breakout support out here. We don't have any kind of a bottom signal as we speak. Maybe you get a TD9 count bottom, but the weekly chart suggests that we had lower. If you look at the daily time frame chart, the daily time frame chart does not have a bottom pattern. In fact, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern. Let me see here. And did we get all the way down to it? I don't think that we have. So we got no bottom signal. We can see price tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line. Uh, this is suggesting that we had lower inside the euro. So because of the 57%, almost 58% weighting of the euro inside the US dollar, that will put strength inside the US dollar index. But you got gold trading up 21 bucks. You've got the US dollar right now trading up 670, at least 672 ticks out there. Again, the flight to, the flight to safety OK, it's going to be the U.S. It's going to be U.S. markets. It's going to be gold. It's going to be the U.S. dollar index out there. Uh, and I know people are like, uh, how can that be? It's just simply the way that it works out. So the past does equal the future. It doesn't always have to unless you want it to. But in this case here, I'm going with the past equals the uh, future. So that's what I see when we take a look at the euro run. I hope that that provided you with the information that you were looking for. David uh, wrote in and wanted to take a look at wheat. So let's get over to those wheat charts out here. If you give me a moment, we'll get back to those. I'm not sure that I'll hit it right off the bat, but I think it's panel two. It is. So uh, wheat uh, went ahead and we're now trading the uh, March uh, 2025 contract out there. Now, I don't know what's in the WEAT, the ETF, but we take a look at wheat, the uh, commodity out here. Right now, we've got price that is just trading with inside its bullish structured profile, David. So your buy zone, your support zone is between 551.30, 556.35. Uh, That's for the daily time frame. Resistance, which is likely where price is going to go target, is 576.55. You close above 576.55 for two consecutive days, well, then you're going to head higher out there. Head higher to where? Well, let's look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows that price right now is um, trying to get back inside its weekly profile. In order to do that, it needs to close above 570.50 on Friday. Don't know whether it's going to do that or not. What if it doesn't do that, Stevie? Then I would say price is likely to get back to test the swing point from August the 30th, that low, which is 542. The monthly time frame chart says, OK, wheat is ready to rally. Why does it say that? Now, it said that really two months ago. It formed a road's momentum indicator bottom pattern. It uh, did that on the trading week of September of 20 uh, trading week, the month of September 2024 out there. The issue that it's dealing with is price is now below profile support. And profile support is at 581.50. So it really needs to get back above 581.50 to have that chance to rally up towards a 645. So bring it home, Stevie. I'll tell you how I bring it home. I don't see a bottom pattern out here other than on the monthly time frame. And the monthly time frame is trading below profile support. And, you know, if it closes below that on uh, next Friday out there, mm, increase the odds of getting back and testing those lows from the August uh, time frame out there. Daily time frame doesn't have a bottom pattern. If you got so here to get bullish on wheat, you need to see two consecutive close about 576.55 out there. If you don't do that, the daily is at least just consolidating with inside its profile. So, David, I hope that provided with the information that you were looking for. Alton writes in and would like to take a look at Devon Energy. DVN is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And as we take a look at DVN, what do we see? Well, yesterday closed below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. We're trading below that again today. It being 38.22. 38.22. Now, we're also trading into a swing point from September 26th. Volume there, about 17 million shares. Yesterday, we were into it with 8 million. Today, in the first two hours, a little over two hours, 2 million, so basically a 6 million share a day going into. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to bust through the lows out there, Alton. Again, those lows that I'm looking at right now on my screen being the 37.77 level. It can, but it doesn't look like it's going to bust out those lows. How about the weekly time frame? With regard to Devon Energy... Let me see if this completed a buy the D point bottom. It had a TD9 count top, so we can see that. That's what's going to start our A to B point out here. We get down to the swing point in June of uh, 2014. I'm just simply going to go to the C point. And, yes, this has a – so this has a weekly buy the D point pattern. The only way that gets negated is a close below the low from September 27th on a weekly basis, 37.77. Monthly chart for Devin does not look very good. 
Now, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern. Did it take out the swing point with volume? The swing point would be February 2024, 157 million shares. We closed below it with 165. Son of a gun. So let's open this up. Make sure I went back far enough. Oh, Stevie did. So first, your first target, this is irrespective. I don't even know if that's a word out there, but Stevie's using his word, is going to be 2445. That's a target. That's its breakout level. That doesn't mean that's where the A to B equals CD pattern is going to end, but that would be the breakout level. With regard to the A to B equals CD pattern out here, we'll draw on the A to B line. And now I hear the music. We're just simply going to move this over to that uh, C point. Yeah, look where this gets you down to. 16 bucks and change out there. So Dev and Energy on the longer term time frame, at least at this moment in time, Alton is not looking very good. That A to B equals CD will likely come to fruition if we get a close below 37.77 on a weekly basis. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I had to break out all my winter gear here. We've got uh, winter is arriving here in Delray Beach, I believe, overnight. We're going to be down in the 50s. CV does not do well when it gets below 70 degrees out there. So, uh, yeah, I've got the park out. I got the whole thing. I had to dust everything off. All right, let's go take a look at FTAI. This is for Hector. And Hector's wondering is if, if this rocket ship will uh, is finding any kind of a top out here. Well, the answer is daily, weekly, monthly. Flat-out answer is no. 
not a not yet not on this daily time frame weekly or monthly monthly time frame and this has been one gigantic rocket ship out here you're only in bar number six to the upside uh so do i see a top no other than consecutive moves higher and lower something like that how about the weekly time frame bar number seven of a td9 count prices above profile resistance the green oscillator and change line says that it wants to continue to move higher and the same thing on the daily time frame now the daily's got a road's momentum indicator signal hector if you do see a bearish reversal candle that doesn't mean a red candle it means a bearish reversal candle then you would have a short-term top price would go seek out support right now support would be at 163 but we don't have that pattern that is in play as we speak right now so uh, where is price headed to great question i don't even know that i have a tool that would help us uh, try to identify that so instead you just have to really be paying attention to um, the daily time frame, at least for some type of short-term top. We're going to finish off the show, take a look at Dollar Tree. And this is for Dan F. Dollar Tree right now. If you look at the uh, monthly time frame, you are in bar number eight of a monthly uh, of a TD9 count pattern. So you could get a TD9 count pattern that forms between this month and the next two. The uh, weekly time frame has a TD9 count bottom pattern that is being tested. That's a TD9 count bottom that formed, the one I'm referring to, the date, the bar that we're looking at is from September the 6th on a weekly time frame out there. Now, that had volume of 66 million shares. Last week when we were testing it was with 36 million shares. Test and reject, and that's a good thing. What you need the weekly chart to do here, uh, Dan, is uh, close above 69.91. And the daily time frame says, hey, maybe prepare for a further move lower, at least to test the swing low. The swing low had volume of 3.5 million shares, and you're testing it today with 2.6. Folks, I've run out of time here. Please have a uh, wonderful Wednesday. Join me again tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp, for our terrific Thursday edition of the Trader's Edge Show. Take care, be safe out there, and pray.